This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the south, today, more Dunedin events are cancelled following the move to the red traffic light setting, with one local charity event postponed again. Christchurch businesses are also feeling the effects of cancellations due to the change in COVID-19 restrictions. And a big donation by one Cromwell Cherry Orchard to help feed those in other parts of the country. Tēnākoto katoa, kia ora, I'm Simon Anderson. As the country adjusts to the red traffic light setting of the government's COVID-19 protective framework, more events are having to be cancelled. The Dunedin City Council met yesterday to discuss the fate of a number of events, while the pandemic has claimed a local charity event for the second time. February was set to be a busy month in Dunedin, with Waitangi Day commemorations on the 6th and Chinese New Year on the 11th. They're among the larger public events which the 100-person gathering limit of the red light setting has put page to, along with the inaugural Music and Parks event and the Sunday Sounds programme at the Botanic Garden. We hold events, we run events for our residents' enjoyment. We hold them, um, the larger major events, for the economic well-being of our community. We're really very aware of the impact cancelling these events has. Community Development and Events Manager Joy Lanini says the council regrets having to cancel events, but it's necessary to put the health and well-being of the community first. Uh, all of those events have been cancelled because they bring in hundreds and some thousands of people into them and we're unable under the new red traffic light system to create bubbles of 100 or less for those to continue. Public council facilities, including swimming pools and libraries, are remaining open but eligible people will need to show a vaccine pass to enter. The limits to public gatherings have forced the cancellation of music and theatre events across the country. In Dunedin, charity fundraiser Behind the Bamboo has now been cancelled twice due to COVID-19. Uh, pretty gutting, actually. Um, it's so sort of stressful um, and it was really unfortunate that, um, given COVID, we had to cancel. Yeah. The event was originally due to be held last August, but was rescheduled for this Saturday. However, the new limit of 100 people would have made the event not worth it for the two charities, Women's Refuge and the Life Matters Suicide Prevention Trust. We heavily rely on the donations that would have been generated by this event, uh, and I feel for all the, the people that were organising this event, um, the venue, and also all the performers. Corinda Taylor says COVID-19 has taken a toll on many people and charities like Life Matters rely on donations to keep operating, especially with increased demand. Festival organisers will consider trying to hold the event again after the Omicron wave of COVID-19 settles down. In Dunedin, the South Today. In the country's second largest city there have been mixed reactions to the change to the red setting. Many Christchurch residents are concerned about losing a number of events over the coming weeks, while others are worried about their livelihoods. While most Cantabrians are complying with the new mask rules, for the region's hospitality industry, already devastated by successive lockdowns since the start of COVID three years ago, the outlook is increasingly grim. Hospitality New Zealand Canterbury branch president Peter Morrison believes the industry desperately needs government assistance. He believes some owners may not survive the latest round of restrictions. I'm seeing frustration, I'm seeing the feedback I'm getting from people is that, you know, this just can't go on and on without some sort of um, government help to us. Because we're the, we are the big, biggest industry that is suffering from this. Morrison says most customers are aware and compliant, but some establishments have decided to hire extra security staff to protect their own staff and review COVID passes. You know, and some, some not, not everywhere. Most people have been very good about it, but there are certain areas we've had to put more um, security on. Competitive sports events like the Coast to Coast and other major and minor public events are also being shelved. It's also tough for the entertainment industry. Theatre company GMG has had to close the doors on the award-winning Madagascar musical after just a few performances. 
For the producers, it was their third time trying to bring the show to Christchurch. It's quite devastating, really. We thought maybe this would be our chance. Um, we owed it to our cast, we owed it to our full company, um, and also our Christchurch audiences. But alas, it wasn't meant to be, unfortunately. The team are now returning home to start focusing on their next production, Beauty and the Beast, which is due to hit the stage in July. In Christchurch, the South Today. Invercargill police are investigating after a four-month-old baby was taken to Southland Hospital on Saturday morning with critical injuries. Police say the baby was transported to Starship Hospital and remained in a critical condition. A scene examination was being carried out at a residential property in Elizabeth Street with the assistance of ESR. The residents of the house are assisting police with their inquiries and at this stage nobody else is being sought in relation to the matter. One Cromwell cherry orchard is shown while charity may start at home, it doesn't have to stop there. Pick Your Own Orchard Cheeky Cherries invited locals to pick sought after fruit over the weekend with the harvest being sent north to help feed hungry families. A chance encounter now bearing fruit for those in need. Cheeky Cherries owner Martin Milne is used to donating fruit to his neighbours in Cromwell. But a recent fluke encounter with an Auckland City Mission chef encouraged him to look at options for sending some of his fruit north. One thing led to another and I said, do you ever get cherries up the City Mission? He says, nah, don't be stupid, we can't afford that. So by the time we got back down to the shop, we had 10 kgs of cherries and 10 kgs of apricots. And we sent it up to him overnight courier, the New Zealand Post, and uh, well received. Once Mel knew the fruit had gone down well, he organised a community charity packing day on Sunday. The result was staggering, with about 400 kilograms of cherries now being donated and shipped to city missions in Wellington, Auckland and Christchurch. I always help the people who need a little bit of help more than I do. And it's a good family day out as well. Come and have a picnic with the kids and you get some real good memories. The charity packing day was organised as a way of making good use of excess fruit after a bumper season and a lack of seasonal workers. The prized cherries are expected to be in the fruit bowls of those in need later this week. In Cromwell, the South Today. If I are is still to come on the South Today, we cover more effects of the COVID traffic light change and a huge hop harvest in Wanaka. If only a brewery can find the people power for it. See you soon. All new episodes of Put Some Colour in Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put some colour in your life. Tuesdays, 7.30. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOLMAP. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. This is the big one. My mate John's massive annual sale starts this weekend. John slashed 20 to 80% off his massive range of rock bottom warehouse price furniture and beds. That's right, 80% off clearance items. Numbers are strictly limited, so don't delay. It's my mate John's Alley Fantastic Sale. The big one starts this weekend at John's Furniture Warehouse, Stafford Street. Get that furniture from Stafford Street. And my mate John. The next generation from Honda. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Hi right there, guess who? You recognise the eyes? Oh, okay, it's a haircut. Anyway, it's Lindsay here from Alex Campbell Menswear. Our three stores are carrying on as usual. Despite what's happening in the world, we have got some great stock for you. Personally, I've spent 50 years in this business, 
and we have some excellent supplier relationships. We've got great stock, it's hand-picked, it's here, it's on time, and it's ready for the great summer. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. So, as my favourite cut says, keep calm and carry on. Every day the team at Gillian supports grieving families at their time of need, from answering your questions to organising a farewell that reflects the wishes of your loved one. We can help. Call Gillian's today. Welcome back. Dunedin shoppers are being asked to only buy what they need after a surge in shopping following Sunday's change in traffic light setting. Supermarkets and other retailers are encouraging customers to not panic buy in response to the switch to stricter COVID-19 restrictions. Toilet paper has been a highly sought after item with some Dunedin supermarkets running out. Paracetamol and cold and flu products have also been in demand with Pack and Save South Dunedin among the sites selling out of the goods and implementing li item limits. Fresh Choice Green Island's owner John Moyle says supermarkets are well prepared and customers should continue to shop normally to avoid temporary shortages. Two schoolboy golfers spent yesterday eating a lot of sweet snacks to keep their energy up on the golf course. George and Thomas are keen golfers, the pair deciding to tackle the longest day endurance challenge to raise money for a cause close to their hearts. Striking out on the fairways for a good cause, 12-year-old friends George Curry and Thomas Clayson were up for the challenge of spending yesterday playing 72 holes of golf on Dunedin's Belmacuan course. A quarter of the way through, they were confident of completing the challenge. I've done 18 so far. All right, I've done so one round and it feels fine. The duo are some of the youngest players in this year's Longest Day Challenge, which raises funds for the Cancer Society. It's a good cause that appeals to them, with both their mothers working as health nurses. Yeah, yeah. I think um, making sure that everyone has a good life, just so that no one's left out. So we're trying to raise a lot of money for people. With the goal of finishing before twilight, the pair had a packed lunch and plenty of Oreo biscuits to keep them going. My mum packed some like double layered, two different flavours Oreos and we just started nibbling on them on the first round. But we've got like some bag of lollies and picnics to go around for the other rounds. Before they even swung the golf clubs, the young pair had raised almost $800 for the Cancer Society. In Dunedin, the South today. A Wanaka Beer Brewery has been offered the harvest of an experimental trial of locally grown hops for free. The only catch is it will require about 100 workers to harvest the crop when it ripens in late March. Checking out his freshly brewed beer. James Hay is the Wanaka businessman behind the independent brewery Bee Effect and he's keen to look at using locally grown hops in his beers. Now he's been offered a small fresh crop from a nearby experimental hop farm planted as a trial near Wanaka three years ago. How often does someone ever ring you and ask you if they want you to look after a hop farm for them, eh? I was like, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity. There's one big catch. Hill will need to find enough people to harvest the crop in late March. That's a bit of a challenge for a small company consisting of just four brewery workers, plus about a dozen people in the hospitality side of the business. We're going to have to harvest these all by hand, so we think we're going to need about sort of a hundred people to help us. Um, and we'll, we'll put on a bit of a hop harvest party. Um, we'll have some music, some food for everyone, obviously some beers, you know, you don't want to get too parched while I'm taking something like that. Wanaka has five independent beer breweries and Hay is working to promote the local industry with events such as the annual Wanaka Beer Festival. If the trial harvest goes well, he's hoping to encourage Wanaka farmers to consider growing hops to help support local brewers. 
and Wanaka, the south today. And the wave of major events being cancelled due to COVID-19 keeps coming. In Wanaka, race four of the Swim Run Series 2022 will still go ahead this Friday, but another multi-sport event scheduled for February is off. Try Wanaka's Run Swim Run event will continue, but numbers will be limited to 100 people in accordance with government regulations. Organisers say entries will be on a first-come, first-in basis this Friday night, and they're encouraging anyone who's feeling unwell to stay at home. But a much larger event, Challenge Wanaka, has had to pull the plug altogether. Organisers announced today the popular annual triathlon festival scheduled for mid-February can't be held at the red light setting. Competitors who have already paid the entry fees will receive a 75% refund or can transfer their entry over to next year. After the break on the south today, Nico Porteous is back on top of the mountain and wet weather is on the way everywhere tomorrow. We'll let you know where the bright spots are. Hey, koko akinei. All new episodes of Put Some Colour in Your Life are now screening on Channel 39. Take a look at Australian artists and the techniques they use in their studio. Put Some Colour in Your Life, Tuesdays, 7.30. risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOLMAP. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. MTF Finance can help you turn the key on your next vehicle with a loan made just for you. TC's and lending criteria apply. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. This is the big one. John slash 20 to 80% off his massive range of rock bottom warehouse price furniture and beds. It's my mate John's Alley Fantastic Sale. My mate John. Living Well Disability Resource Centre, a not-for-profit charitable organisation and your one-stop shop for information and resources to help you retain independence. We offer a wide range of assistive products from jar openers to mobility scooters and provide assessments for Total Mobility, the half-price taxi scheme. Come and see the friendly team. You'll find us on the corner of George and Bath Streets, ground floor of Burns House. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Hi, my name's Matt and I'm the Dines Group CEO. Dines is a company that's focused on selling logistics solutions to its customers. We're passionate about selling efficiency and we've been selling efficiency for over 50 years now.
Hoki mai no. The Highlanders have been forced to make changes to their upcoming pre-season games following the country's move to red. The Farmlands Cup between the Highlanders and Crusaders in early February will still be played in Western and North Otago, but on a closed field with no public crowds. Associated school visits, a family fun day and a post-match Dave Dobbin concert have also been cancelled. Meanwhile, the team's scheduled game against Moana Pacifica in Queenstown on the 11th of February will no longer go ahead, although a closed match is being considered. Wanaka freestyle skier Nico Porteous was lost for words after defending his title in the X Games Ski Superpipe in Aspen. The 20-year-old free skier left it until the fourth and final run to land what the commentators described as the most technical halfpipe run ever landed in the X Games Ski Superpipe competition history. Claiming the gold medal, Nico Porteous said the event was arguably the most high-pressure moment of his skiing career. Nico's older brother Miguel finished in seventh place, the first time the pair had competed alongside each other at an X Games. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South today. More Dunedin events are being cancelled due to the switch to the red traffic light system, with one local charity event pulled for a second time. Christchurch businesses are also worried about the effects of the switch, which is impacting hospitality business and theatre companies. And Cromwell's Cheeky Cherries Orchards has donated about 400 kilograms of the popular fruit to the city missions across the country. And now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT, we welcome Associate Editor Jo Simpson. Kia ora Jo. Hi. The Southern District Health Board faces the possibility of prosecution after an inquiry by the Health Disability Commissioner into the death of a woman with a serious heart condition in, in a local hospital. Mm. Niwa is warning the increase of fire risks in some of New Zealand's wettest area as La Nina forces them to become unseasonably dry. Wow. And there are currently 16 people self-isolating in the south right now for, in the fight against COVID, so we've got more details on right. that. Thanks, Joan. Thank you. And time now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Starting with today's southern view, taken of Dunedin's octagon on a stunning summer's day. Looking at the situation, the cold southwesterly airflow arriving tonight will last for a few days, bringing chilly winds and widespread showers to the region. The wild weather should clear by the end of the week, with a warmer weekend on the way. So as we head towards the top of the island, it's rained for both Westport and Greymouth on 21 and 19 degrees. Wet too in the northeast, looking like thunderstorms for Blenheim too on 27 degrees, Nelson on 23. The wet weather extends right down the Canterbury coast on 20 or 21. And down south, still wet, only colder. Some strong southwesterlies to accompany those showers as well on 14 or 15 degrees. Across in central, Tiana is much the same, gusty southwesterlies, showers and 14 degrees. That forewarns the other three towns who can enjoy a high in the early 20s before the arrival of late showers and increasing southwesterlies. And further north can expect the same, up to 24 or 25 degrees with southwesterlies developing and rain later on. Here in Dunedin tonight, Fine with northeast winds and an overnight low of 15 degrees. Tomorrow, early sun and northerly winds are interrupted by showers and cooler southwesterlies, which continue to strengthen a high of 23 and a low of 9. And the wind and showers continue on Thursday morning before slowly clearing over the day, things remaining cold and cloudy, a high of 14 and a low of 4. And in Invercargill. Fine at first tonight, but showers and colder southwesterlies developing before dawn, an overnight low of 11. So it will be wet and windy tomorrow morning, and while there's some respite during the afternoon, the weather's back come evening, a high of 15 and a low of 7. Things do lighten Thursday morning, and through the day, a high of 13 and a low of 4 degrees. And that's the news this Tuesday. For the latest news and videos from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz. You can follow Channel 39 on YouTube to catch our news bulletins on demand. Nō reira ki a pai te pō, ka kita anō.
This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air.